Hey everyone, this is Stephanie with High Tower Stitching. I'm back with part three of our pinwheels quilt. And right now we're still constructing it and we're getting ready to sew the parts together. And we've moved into our planning floor. <laughs> and as you can see, I have some of the pieces sewn together and some of them not. But it was really a puzzle. As nice as the pieces were to make and cut out, you really had to watch the way the orientation or the turning of the different pieces. But I want you to know, because I have one extra row around the outside edge, I didn't have any pieces left over. I'm going to use all of the pieces. If you, rem if you remember the top two blocks up there, the plaid and the green, I made those blocks and then finished it out and laid every then laid everything else out until I liked the way it was. And one of the, one of the trickiest things for me once I get it all laid out is moving it from here to where the sewing machine is. They're in two different places. And even if you were working on the table by you, you'd want to come up with a strategy. And so what I've done is I've taken each row and I do about half of the row. And I, what I've done is I've laid it out on that board that's got batting on it. These are not sewn together. You can see these are just laying there ready to go. But what I found out when I got to the sewing machine was I started with the bottom row and I would sew this one to this one. But before I got ready to do any sewing, I wanted to pin them because you'd be amazed how many times a piece will turn and you'll say, how did that do that? And you have to go back and take it out. So as I get ready to do this, I'm going to start over here on my right hand side. I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to fold it in and I'd pin it. Not like that, but pin it like if you have two hands, it's easier. And I'd fold that back and see it stayed in the right position. Then I'd pick up the whole part or I just move this part over and I'm going to pin, going to pin it and pin it correctly up there and open it up and then I'm going to take the next piece and pin it and see all of a sudden I've made my life a lot easier and I could do some chain piecing on the sewing machine or by, but I'm not going to do that I'm going to do one strip a seam and then I'm going to cut it off and then I'm going to start the next one and I'm going to pull this last one over well, and hook it on just the way it goes and pin it and open it. And then I'd have all of these pieces pinned. And if you wanted to do, if you wanted to call this row five, you could put a piece of paper with a five left on it. You could go up and pin the next row and call that four left, three left, two left, or whatever. Let's see, five, four, three, two. So it's really four, three, two, one. You'd have four rows and you'd be ready to take those all to the machine or carry this in there and go ahead and do that. Before I got ready to sew the long strips together, I went ahead and I pressed open the seams. Well, I really just hand pressed them with my fingers and did that to all the rows. And then I went and I started putting the rows together, matching the blocks. And here's, here's the back of one of the panels. And you can see here was my row going across. You can see that I had opened up all of the seams all the way across. And these two rows were ready to go together. So I pinned those carefully at this joining and then at the next joining and went ahead and stitched all the way across and I put all of my four rows together and then I was ready to go to the ironing board and that went, then I was able to set those ones that I had finger pressed and I was ready to open up my long ones and now as I lay all of the parts back down 
as far as I've gotten. You can see how they're all going to fit together. So I'm going to do the one that's on the cardboard, sew those together, and then hook those to the yellow one on the left and pin it very carefully and then op open it and press it. And if you're close to your sewing machine, you could actually go all the way across, for example, row four, and row one, and go all the way across and hook those together. Set it aside. Make sure you call it one left so you'd know that that red one was the left. Then go to row two and go all the way across. It's just the way you'd like to work, whether you want to do the whole row at a time or divide it into sections. This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit subscribe and like. If there's anything I've forgotten, I'll write it in the description. And always leave comments. They'll help me and help others. Thank you.